Okay, um, warmly welcome to the second annual lecture of Eudaimonia Institute. This is the last event in our busy uh, spring program. I am Eudaimonia's director, Jodi Matti Kuukkanen. The annual lecture is Eudaimonia's flagship event, which intends to bring people together around the topic that is widely interesting and given by an eminent international level scholar. It is also live streamed. The lecture will be followed by a social gathering. Before I introduce our speaker today, some practical matters. Uh, there will be a lecture, 45 to 60 minutes, followed by a discussion, something like 90, uh, under, oh, forgive me, 30 minutes. So we will end in 90 minutes, the whole um, occasion today. Today, our speaker is Veli Pekka Lehtola, who is professor emeritus of Sami culture in the Kielagas Institute here at the University of Oulu. He has worked extensively on the history of the Sami and Lapland, modern Sami art, as well as on the changes in the Sami representations. Because of his pioneering work that spans decades, it's a great honor to have him as our guest today. Most of you are well familiar with his work, and many of you know naturally much more than me. But let me mention just briefly a few landmarks in his career. Veli Pekka has published no less than 13 books, and of course numerous, over a hundred articles. The Sami people, Traditions in Transition, was published by the University Press of Alaska in 2014. Velipekka regards the book Saamelaiset Suomalaiset Kohtaamisia 1896-1953 from 2012 as one of his main books. In translation, it's Sami Finns Encounters in 1896-1953. His publications have appeared in Finnish, Sami, English, and in translations in Swedish, French, German, Hungarian, and Russian. It is worth mentioning that his most recent book in Finnish, Entiset elävät meissä, saamelaisten historiat ja Suomi, was awarded prestigious Botnia Prize last year. Uh, I won't try translating it here now. It is his other main publication as defined by himself. The Finnish Association of Nonfiction Writers has granted him the Nonfiction Writer Award for his high standard work. In 2016, Finnish Academy of Science and Letters, Suomalainen Tiede Akatemia, selected him a member because of his academic and scientific merits. There would be, of course, much more to tell and enlist. For example, I won't go into many research projects that he has led. Yet one of the things that I found through his personal web pages is extensive experience in what he calls uh, as a non writer, that is, a literary odd man, as he himself put it, who, in quotation, writes, travels, and gives statements. End of quotation. For example, in writing newspaper articles, literary criticism, columns, as well as does many kinds of editorial and cultural literary work, and so on and on. I encourage anyone who hasn't visited to go to his web page. You'll discover how many scholarly and non-scholarly sites there are in him and in his career. Today, 
Velipekka will be speaking about Sami histories, truth and reconciliation. You won't need me to say that these are extremely topical issues, not only in Finland, but also globally. To spell out how topical and how significant is best to leave for Velipekka. Therefore, it's a great pleasure and an honor for me and Eudemonia to give now the floor to Velipekka without further ado. Please, the floor is yours. Hello to all <coughs> ladies and gentlemen here and uh, in the internet. Uh, uh, I have heard that uh, Professor Emeritus can do whatever he wants and I want to change my title of the presentation uh, because uh, as uh, I soon describe uh, the, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission in, in Finland uh, has only slowly uh, proceeded in, in its uh, work and that's why uh, I cannot uh, bring up uh, 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 not much uh, results of that work. Uh, but uh, I have been uh, uh, myself uh, in a hearing of the commission and uh, uh, the uh, the um, presentation that you will hear now is uh, maybe a uh, um, uh, larger more uh, contextualized uh, version of uh, what i was saying to the to the commission uh, about the uh, Sami history, different uh, different uh, uh, sides of uh, Sami history, and uh, this is also uh, also starting point uh, for my uh, for my work that I will be doing for the commission uh, because uh, I will be doing a report of. Uh, of uh, a historical report uh, for the commission commission uh, for for their purposes so uh, i will i will beginning with the, with this politics of reconciliation and then then go to the uh, to the issues of uh, of sami history uh, problematics of uh, sami history as such uh, this uh, Politics of uh, apologies uh, have been going on among the indigenous peoples, uh, especially from 1990s on. And concerning to the Sami in, in Norway in 1997, uh, the king of Norway uh, apologized the Sami about the, the misbehavings of, uh, of the uh, Norwegian state against the Sami. And uh, in Sweden next year, uh, the Minister of Agriculture apologized uh, uh, on behalf of their, uh, their ministry. And uh, in Norway, this has uh, proceeded uh, in a way that uh, the Norwegian government in uh, 2004 made a large report about the uh, history of, uh, of the Norwegian Sami uh, uh, relations and made an apology on behalf of, uh, of the Norwegian government. In Finland it has been a little more quiet. Uh, in 1998 when, when, the, uh, when the Swedish uh, minister made his uh, uh, apology, uh, the Sami radio was asking the Minister of uh, Justice in Finland and he was saying that at this moment there are not such uh, issues w which could result on apologies. Uh, but uh, in 2012, uh, in the Sami National Day in Inari, 
Bishop of Oulu chapter, Samuel Salmi, apologized for the misbehaving of, uh, of, uh, of the Finnish church towards the Sami. And uh, it included uh, the belittling of the Sami language, the role of church in ethnic research or, or the racial studies, uh, which uh, he saw that uh, were humil humil humiliating the Sami. Uh, about this, uh, this uh, Truth and Reconciliation Commission processes in, in Nordic countries, uh, in February 2017, in Trondheim, the Sami were having a very large convention uh, because uh, it was a uh, hundred years that uh, the Sami cooperation has, had been going on. Uh, and uh, there were not tens or uh, hundreds of uh, Sami in Trondheim, but there were thousands of uh, Sami there. I was also a week there and uh, it was an experience of my lifetime because uh, I, ne I will never uh, experience that again, that so much Sami are in, the, in one city, that everywhere uh, where you, you did go there, there were Sami. In, in that uh, meeting, the conference of Sami parliamentarians, uh, parliamentarians uh, and the Youth Council made a declaration uh, that Truth and Recon Reconciliation Commission should be started in every Nordic country. And next year, Norway started its uh, own process uh, and they will be ready to publish their results uh, next summer. Uh, this summer. But uh, in Finland, discussion and pre preliminary hearings in Sami area and cities were taking uh, that uh, same year, but it took uh, four years before uh, the actions, uh, the, the final uh, composition of the commission uh, could uh, start their work. Uh, there, there has been uh, mistrust between the Sami and the state and uh, this is at least partly due to different processes in it, in, initiated by, uh, recently by the state in the, in the Sami area. But uh, last autumn, same time with a similar body in Sweden, also uh, the commission started in Finland. But uh, to go to the to the uh, more to the problematics of uh, of the Sami historical research, uh, here's a map for those who don't know anything about the Sami. Uh, this is the map of uh, of the Sami Sami land, uh, and uh, as you see, it's a quite large area, uh, stretching uh, from. Dalarna in, in, in central Sweden to the tip of the Kola Peninsula in the, in the Russian side. It's, a, it's many thousands of uh, kilometers long area and, uh, and Finnish Sapmi is only a part of it. But I will uh, focus on, on Finnish Sapmi in my presentation. We have our, our own languages, own cultural traditions. We are a minority in four countries, and uh, we are an indigenous people. There are nine Sami languages. Uh, 20 years ago, there were 10 Sami languages, but the last speaker of so-called Akkala Sami in the Russian side was uh, died in 2004, so... so I think he was uh, quite lonely uh, to speak, to be the only speaker of, of his language. Well, uh, Sami histories uh, are, I could say, always a topical issue. That uh, first, uh, this Truth and Reconciliation Commission in all Nordic countries 
uh, which is uh, dealing with uh, trauma, traumatic uh, experiences of the past and uh, especially the boarding school experiences are, are quite uh, central here and I will come back to that later. And there have been books and discussions on Nordic and Finnish colo colonialism uh, if uh, if there were uh, uh, there were uh, more gentle forms of uh, colonialism in Scandinavian countries uh, compared to the real European colonialism, uh, they have been pondering if, uh, uh, especially in Finland, uh, there there can be. Uh, uh, can be discussion uh, about colonialism because it was ruled and oppressed by Sweden and then uh, Russia. So a people who is oppressed, can it oppress other people? Uh, that is the question. And uh, and uh, there has been a debate, is, is it even reason, reasonable to speak about colonialism in Finland? Well, I have been uh, writing an article about that, uh, so so uh, I will deal with these uh, issues in that uh, article. Uh, and um, the, the, uh, two years ago, there was published a novel by by a Sami artist and uh, author Nilas Holmberg, Halla Helle. Uh, which was talking about uh, what he called uh, colonial mental disorder. And he was uh, referring to the contradiction of past and present uh, among the indigenous Sami youth, uh, young Sami people. Because uh, uh, he was pointing out that uh, there is a constant demand of uh, expertise in many levels uh, traditional and modern levels, and uh, uh, in addition to that, uh, the the young people must be so-called walking dictionaries for outsiders about the Sami culture, and uh, 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 those who who can read uh, Finnish language, uh, I rec recommend uh, this uh, this novel of uh, Holmberg, and then. There are a lot of uh, uh, local and personal histories uh, which uh, tell humorous and uh, I would say conciliatory stories about the uh, Sami history uh, and I call these our histories. I will come back to this also in my, in my paper. About myself, I, I, I have been working quite a lot uh, in recent years uh, uh, with the uh, with the exhibition in the Sami Museum Sita in Inari, uh, where they have been re renewing the main exhibition, which uh, was opened uh, last summer, and uh, there are also quite interesting historical events. Uh, one was uh, that the National Museum of Finland repatriated the whole collection of Sami ethnographic uh, ethnographic artifacts for the Sami Museum Sita, the whole collection. Uh, and uh, and the, we were making that main exhibition, Enam uh, la min parna, these lands are our children, uh, which was dealing with the Sami social memory, Sami cultural environment, and uh, also the uh, the concepts that we we found uh, interesting and uh, important, Birket in in uh, uh, the northern Sami language to cope on, and Kulahallat to communicate both with the nature and uh, and the other people uh, uh, people and peoples in in the area. Uh, and. Uh, as uh, earlier was mentioned, that uh, I had this uh, book project, Entiset Elävä Meissä, which uh, I would uh, uh, translate past generations live in us. Uh, 
And these were parallel projects, uh, the museum exhibition and the book. Uh, and I was uh, using the, uh, the idea of uh, many cultural historians, but also the, the idea of the Sami themselves, that uh, the culture means essentially that uh, the past lives in us. Uh, Jelena Porsanger, a, a Sami scholar, has uh, said that ancestors are living in our everyday life as whispers uh, all the time. Uh, so, so the life uh, of past generations, uh, what, for instance, in, in the exhibition was not not depicted uh, uh, only as historical traces, but uh, uh, but uh, uh, an, an essential part of uh, contemporary Sami society. So, so we were uh, uh, coming to the historical consciousness of the Sami, which uh, include uh, oral tradition uh, extending back to uh, at least uh, three or four generations in details. And uh, then we have also histories, academic history research, which is uh, maybe quite uh, far away from, from the everyday Sami perspective that uh, they they are us usually foc focusing on 17th and uh, 18th cent centuries and uh, so so maybe uh, for instance the, the museum sami museums are, are more important for the historical consciousness of the sami than the academic research and uh, we were also using, and I was using uh, in my my book, uh, the idea that uh, Sami memory as uh, as presence of earlier generations, and that uh, we are all uh, uh, having different levels of times uh, time living in us. And I was uh, referring to French uh, historian Fernand Praudel. Uh, uh, in this, uh, think, for instance, a Sami reindeer man going to the fields. First, uh, he has many short time uh, changes, uh, cultural traces in uh, within uh, with him: a snowmobile, warmth uh, clo clothes, uh, GPS. Uh, so-called Western knowledge uh, on the environment, and so on. Then he has uh, medium-long processes that, can, uh, that we can trace uh, prehistorically and historically. For instance, we know when the, when the Sami language has, uh, has been taking, uh, taking its uh, shape. Uh, we know the history of Suopan or Lasso, uh, dog as a reindeer hand, uh, cacti or Sami garment. We don't. We we know those histories, and uh, of course the features are in, in the world view. For instance, the changing religious uh, conceptions uh, belong to this medium-long uh, processes, and then we have long-time processes that go uh, go back to the to the uh, early uh, human histories. And uh, those include adapting to the nat natural environment and other means of kulahallan, uh, which means communicating with the nature or other people, uh, meaning that uh, other other people among us and uh, then also other peoples uh, uh, in addition to us. And... Uh, of course, for instance, permanent uh, dependency between the Sami and the reindeer is this kind of, uh, of uh, long process. Well, about uh, discussing the, the Sami histories, uh, uh, and now I'm going to the, what, what I was saying in the hearing uh, to the Truth and Reconciliation uh, Commission. Uh, I see that 
there are two main discourses uh, when discussing the Sami histories. First is the inter-ethnic level between the majority and minority and uh, the Sami and the state. And uh, this is the, the level where uh, you usually uh, confront the themes of colonialism, oppression, uh, asymmetrical power relations. And this is the pre predominant discourse in public. How do you uh, discuss about the Sami histories? That uh, you many uh, often hear this, uh, that uh, it's uh, colonial histories and so on. But uh, I want to uh, also to emphasize the intra-ethnic uh, intra or intra-ethnic uh, level local histories and, and strategies, which I call uh, our histories. And these are perspectives of local Sami communities, uh, including Sami ethnopolitics, but also traditional means of, uh, of land use, own networks, and traditions uh, of uh, governance uh, inside of the Sami society. Uh, and uh, all these are, of course, in constant change in, in modern times. And these discourses intertwine and feed each other, but there are also tensions uh, uh, if uh, one discourse is overly emphasized. And I have been saying that uh, that uh, sometimes it feels that uh, that uh, in interethnic level is uh, even overly emphasized. Uh, well, uh, going to the historical turns and uh, and colonial impacts in in the Sami history. Uh, that uh, that the commission is dealing with uh, i when speaking about the history. One one big uh, issue is uh, the effects uh, of the border closings, especially in the 19th and, uh, 19th and uh, uh, 20th centuries, uh, that uh, are still influencing, for instance, the Skolt Sami identi uh, identities who were forced to move to Inari area uh, after the Second World War. Then uh, another issue is uh, the implementation of, uh, of racial theories uh, to the Sami people. And uh, now we are speaking about the scientific colonialism. Uh, I don't know if uh, how many have seen the Sami blood film by Amanda Kernel some which is dealing with uh, with this uh, racial study issue and in finland there has been a discussion about the role of the finnish church in the excavations of uh, sami cemeteries and uh, there have been uh, processes and uh, ceremonies uh, the, uh, to repatriate these uh, remains uh, sami remains uh, first was uh, 1995, and uh, the the second was uh, last summer in in Inari and Utsjoki, as you see in the lower lower picture. And then, of course, the Second World War was uh, important for the uh, for the uh, Sami. Uh, and especially the Lapland War, where, where the German troops uh, destroyed all the all the Lapland, both in uh, Finnish side and, and Norwegian side. And uh, it was followed by the reconstruction period, when, when the Sami land was uh, uh, also mentally uh, reconstructed, that it was a strong assimilation phase uh, with uh, with a strong Finnish and Norwegian values and ideals uh, 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 that uh, that Sami were fa facing with, and uh, here we come to the boarding school experiences uh, as a part of uh, of this process, uh, and uh, 
the problematic role of the school system uh, uh, concerning the, the Sami. And then, of course, later building of the power plants uh, and res reserve, uh, reserve, uh, reserve, reserve, how, how do you say it? Reserve, reservoirs, yeah. And, uh, and this was not so bad in Finnish side uh, as it was in, the, in Sweden and Norway. But also in Finland, uh, you, you had uh, quite large large uh, uh, processes going on and uh, also other actions concerning the, the environment. Well, uh, you can also uh, talk uh, about the colonialism in a broader sense, that uh, it was a question about uh, disregarding and replacing the Sami structures with those of the ma majority, so so the ma majority structures were replacing the Sami, Sami institution, uh, institutions, including social forms, uh, land use traditions, uh, language, culture, and uh, especially language and culture were dealing with uh, with the school system, and that's why we. Uh, I find this uh, concept of colonialism and, uh, and uh, asymmetrical power relations a uh, very, very important concept uh, uh, in this uh, relations. And reason for contemporary controversies is that the Sami struct uh, structures did not vanish, but they survived underneath. And... Uh, and these layered structures uh, are colliding in modern conflicts. So that uh, that the reason uh, is not that uh, that the uh, Sami structures uh, uh, were vanishing, but uh, because they survived, uh, they are they are still colliding to to the uh, Finnish and Norwegian and Swedish uh, structures. Well, about uh, more precisely about the boarding school experiences, uh, the context for this is the revision of the Compulsory Education Act in, in 1947, when all children in Finland were obligated to participate year-round uh, educa education. And for the children in remote areas, especially in Samiland, uh, large schools and dormitories were built uh, in the central villages, uh, such as uh, Inari, Ivalo, uh, Enontekyö, Muonio, uh, all functioning in the Finnish language and uh, with uh, Finnish values. And because of the poor uh, traffic uh, connections, uh, for instance, the children from Tjatno area or Teno area could uh, visit their homes only a few times uh, in, in a school year. For instance, uh, there, there could be children who could go to, the, uh, to, to their homes only on, in Christmas time, maybe Easter and then, then summer holidays. Well, of course, there were positive aspects that uh, this is this was that uh, education was possible also to poor families with a full board, and uh, and the uh, dormitories of of course could uh, could teach uh, social skills for the children. And Sami youth could uh, educate them, themselves to teachers, uh, etc. And this was the base for the rise of the so-called radical Sami youth in the in the 1960s and 70s. But there were also problems that were culturally very traumatic. Uh, children coming from different contexts uh, with uh, other, uh, uh, another cultural and of the linguistic background 
they were coming to a very different uh, uh, different uh, uh, frames uh, even the diet changed uh, in an e- environment with uh, Finnish language and, and values in the state uh, in the state schools uh, the Sami language had no status until uh, the 1970s Uh, the children had to learn their teacher's language in order to be able to follow the lessons. So it was quite a contradictory situation. Minna Rasmus here in Kelagas Institute has studied uh, uh, these uh, boarding school experiences and he finds, uh, he fi- she fi- finds uh, hierarchical uh, structures Uh, and problems of uh, a total institution with uh, bullying, violence and even sexual abuse. Uh, and uh, in the boarding school, the Sami children lost gradually not only their cultural self-confidence, but also the relationship uh, to their family's language, as well as their own traditions as uh, uh, reindeer herding or or tuotti or tra- traditional uh, handicraft and these were those uh, traumatic experiences which were in a kind frozen to them uh, that uh, because they they couldn't uh, 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 they couldn't share them uh, with uh, anyone uh, and some uh, as uh, minna rasmus is saying some of them comp- coped on Some others uh, did not. Well, to continue with the colonial histories, it's not uh, only a historical uh, issue, but uh, they are still continuing. Even in the uh, 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 nowadays, the Sami feel to have been uh, subjugated without negotiations in many processes in, in it, in, initiated by the state. There are new fishing regulations in the Atno River by Finland and Norway, and, uh, and sa- the Sami feel that uh, they were not ne- negotiated on that. Or the plans for the Arctic Railway through the Finnish Sapmi and reindeer herding areas, uh, this uh, plan Uh, seems to be uh, buried nowadays, uh, luckily. Uh, the rejection of the indigenous ILO convention in the, Sami, in, the, in the Finnish parliament in 2015 is also part of this. And, uh, uh, for instance, last uh, autumn, you, the fin, Finns could follow the... And the debate on the Sami question uh, that was uh, it's about uh, blurring the definition of the Sami uh, in the process of uh, re- renewing the Sami Parliament Act uh, uh, in the in the spring uh, uh, the, uh, this spring uh, and they they brought up Uh, escalated attitudes in, in the social media, even racist uh, opinions uh, uh, towards Sami. And uh, it has been said that uh, this, this have been traumatic experiences uh, to the Sami youth uh, in a similar way than we, that uh, we are speaking about the older generations with the traumatic experiences of, of the boarding school. Uh, boarding, uh, boarding schools and other historical uh, events. Well, uh, I was saying to the Commission that uh, it's very essential to map and try to reconciliate these problems and experiences, how to prevent them and uh, uh, to hap- about happening in future and uh, how to identify the similar issues today but uh, but this should not uh, remain only uh, the only perspective of uh, of historical uh, uh, understanding uh, because uh, 
it can be very depressive for the younger generation only to have these kind of negative uh, events and so on. And uh, I would say also that many ordinary Sami may not recognize their own experiences in this kind of uh, uh, in, in this kind of concepts of uh, of colonialism and and such. Even it uh, has happened to them also, but uh, it's uh, it's maybe uh, quite far away about how they understand them. And uh, many, many small communities tell their own histories, uh, which can strongly differ from established or official historical descriptions or scientific representations of the past. And uh, there are also these kind of generalizations uh, made that, uh, that uh, can feel, can sound very, uh, very uh, far away uh, from, from usual Sami. And uh, these our histories can be told maybe without referring to dominant societies at all. And uh, so Sami histories can also be told without the frames of uh, colonialism. In those, uh, in those histories we are not telling about the Sami as victims of modernization or something like that, but uh, as subjects uh, of their own agency and uh, as transcultural actors. And uh, in attempts to reconciliation, history should also be taken as an empowering resource, a resource not only a resource for, for digging up uh, these kind of negative uh, uh, events. And uh, there we uh, could be sharing the same exper Sami ex experiences uh, of coping with the changes, that uh, the Sami have been very skillful always to cope on uh, with the changes, because uh, we, we are nowadays many times thinking that uh, the, uh, the Sami society has uh, changed only in the modern times, but uh, it has been going on all the time. And uh, we could uh, learn something about uh, our ancestors' uh, skills to, to be coping on. And uh, uh, these testimonies of our stories uh, uh, are important uh, when we understand them uh, uh, getting on in colonial circumstances uh, and... Uh, and to uh, survive there. It's, uh, it's also about the change of, uh, of perspective here, because uh, uh, in Sami history research, uh, there has been a quite a shift in, in the, uh, in the uh, perceptions uh, recent, in recent uh, 20 or 30 years. That earlier, the Sami histories were were uh, understood more like, uh, like from from the outsider perspectives. And for instance, we have a lots of uh, photo material uh, from from the uh, about Sami uh, historical Sami people, and uh, we could uh, name that uh, that photo here that uh, there are laps from Utsuki traditional way of uh, calling, uh, titling these, uh, these photographs. But when, when the Sami are studying these same photographs and uh, ideas, they find out, out that it's the municipality court of Utsjoki in 1920s. So the perspective shift is quite, uh, quite uh, uh, remarkable. And recognizing these stories does not weaken the analysis of uh, colonialism or of the asymmetrical power relations, but uh, rather it uh, strengthens uh, the interpretations by, by articulating the ability and the power of Sami 
four mothers and and four fathers. Well, I think that was it was nearly forty five minutes. I was even am I too early? But I have a two two photos. My friend took a nice pair of photos and uh, to go back to the negotiation between the Sami and the state, uh, I can show show it. And there, there are the articles. Uh, I can give this uh, PowerPoint for somebody if somebody is interested to have this this uh, article information. But here is the photo. Uh, Tina Sanilaikio, former president of Sami Tiki uh, or Sami Parliament in Finland, and Paula Lehtomäki, the secretary of uh, state, negotiating about uh, uh, about uh, uh, truth and reconciliations. It's a nice photo, but sometimes uh, it can be also a little tiring. Thank you. Well, I don't know if uh, Tina is following this uh, in internet, so I have I have not asked her promise to to show this. Uh, I hope that uh, it's all right. Okay, is this on? Do you hear? Okay, uh, thanks so much for the wonderful lecture. Um, if you want. Uh, any of this information, if you are not able to get it now, then just send me an email, and I, I, will, I will forward the information. Now we have good time, plenty of time for uh, discussions and, and questions. Uh, who would like to start by commenting or asking? Any? Anything in, in your mind? Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, more like a short comment. You mentioned uh, the ra railroad. Uh, it's not. It's not. It's not dead. The, the eastern routes are dead. But but okay, yeah. they are. They are still discussing whether it should go uh, through Haparanda from Polari straight to the west or from straight up up to Tromsa. I, I, I don't know if that would still be a problem, but I guess that's better than the original plan. Yes, it will be a problem still. They are talking about the Arctic Silk Road. Yeah, that. Okay. But I don't know about these plans for Arctic Silk, Silk Road because it was about the, the uh, uh, climate change when, when the Arctic Ocean, uh, there, there will be opened a new, new Silk Road to, to China, Chinese markets and, and so on. So that's why they were planning this kind of uh, traffic connections. To there, and uh, I don't know how this is the, the new situation with the Ukrainian war is uh, affecting to this uh, this Silk Road idea. Okay, um, I think actually, if you would like to have a glass of wine, meanwhile we are discussing. That's possible too. Just feel free. I have two hands up, and the first one. Hi, uh, that, that was phenomenal. It's so so amazing to to learn about these histories. Um, so I I come from Aotearoa, New Zealand, uh, and okay. um, I suppose the the sorts of indigenous spaces that I work in and with uh, involve involve Maori. And one of the one of the key things is 
the way in which Māori and the, the very notion of a Māori identity um, really only formed when through the colonisation of Aotearoa um, and that uh, Māori are made up of, of like countless iwi that have different histories and, and stories and, and, and connections um, and, I, and I sort of get the sense that uh, Samia also have various histories and I'm wondering how, how they sort of, uh, how do you, you maintain the, 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 the sense of, of difference um, amongst the Sami uh, while still negotiating as, as sort of a, uh, a population. Yeah. Do you mean how the Sami have survived? Uh, how how they sort of maintain multiple identities through different spaces, and um, yeah. while you know dominant politics try and reduce Sami to one population, and how how do they sort of resist that essentialization of Sami? Yes, there. Of course, there. There are many faces uh, on that uh, that uh, cultural survival that uh, that uh, uh, the Sami have been uh, compared to other Arctic peoples in uh, in the Arctic areas. The Sami have been longer in the influence of uh, European cultures. That, for instance, in Siberia, it began in 17th and 18th century, and, and uh, in Canada also. But uh, the Sami have been all, already in in the Roman time. They have been influenced by the by the Middle European cultures. But uh, it, I I would say that uh, that. Uh, Especially in the in the 18th century and 19th century, it uh, became more more influential. This uh, outside uh, outside uh, pressure, and uh, and uh, I would say that uh, some kind of old-fashioned way, old-fashioned uh, way, this kind of. Uh, uh, Especially the reindeer Sami were were these kind of who who were quite uh, quite strongly uh, keeping their own own cultural forms, and uh, it was the maybe the the m most uh, consistent culture to to have their own forms, uh, but if com Paired with uh, Inari Sami, for in, for instance, uh, the, it was uh, the reindeer Sami. You you can say it, that it was uh, very very consciously resisting the the outside influences. But uh, on on the contrary to that, the Inari Sami were were taking those uh, influences to have this kind of uh, two cult two linguistic two culture uh, uh, idea of the of uh, idea of surviving and uh, it worked qu uh, quite well uh, even to the second world war but after that it has been uh, very difficult for them to to maintain their their cultures and languages but uh, in 90s, 1980s and uh, 1990s, there was the turn to uh, even uh, with the small languages like uh, Inari Sami and Skold Sami uh, and, uh, and their cultures. Uh, these uh, revitalization processes that uh, started, especially in 1990s, they have been very forceful among the Sami and uh, nowadays, for, for instance, in in the studies of uh, Kielakas Institute, uh, the, there is this uh, North Sami is the main lang has been the main language uh, in the Sami area, and it has been the main main uh, subject uh, of teaching here also. 
But nowadays Inari Sami and Skol Sami are also uh, uh, in in our curriculum. That uh, that uh, the, this uh, reflects the, the force of uh, of this revitalization processes. And Maoris has all, have also their part in this because uh, in 1990s the Inari Sami revitalization started with the language nest uh, processes and it was adopted from from Maori uh, context uh, but uh, I think also Maori took it from the from somewhere else so it's it has been quite interesting thanks very much But uh, to uh, I'm trying to write this down so I don't sound dumb. <laughs> so, um, okay, so you you had this great point. Um, I, I'm from the United States, and uh, uh, I'm very interested in like uh, literature and the arts. And I was particularly interested in this idea of these counter narratives that you brought up, these counter stories that are provided. Correct? You were talking about mm -hmm. how there's new forms of uh, narratives that provide agency for the Sami people that kind of counter these typical imperial or colonial narratives, correct? Yeah. Okay. So my question is, is like, what do you think is the role of the arts in providing like these counter stories? And, and can you provide some examples of these, uh, these counter narratives that you think demonstrate this new form of agency? Um, do you have anything off, off, you know, offhand that you would, you know, be interested in sharing? So I, I'd be definitely interested in looking into those. And... Yeah. Yes, this uh, counter narrative is uh, quite interesting. It has also two sides there, because uh, as I was saying that uh, that this interethnic and intraethnic levels uh, counter narrative. When when we are speaking about the counter narratives among the Sami, we are usually speaking about the interethnic level that uh, the Sami are bringing counter narratives to the majority discourse but uh, but they are usually they they I was uh, also um, I was referring that uh, many counter narratives are there in the intra ethnic level that the Sami are telling their stories and then there are artists like uh, Nilsal Valkapa who bring them bring these stories to the interethnic level and uh, they they turn out to be counter narratives to the to the majority narratives but uh, but uh, I don't know if I I'm clear enough that uh, I was just can you maybe, because I, I know nothing about this, could you maybe explain, uh, you mentioned this artist, like uh, what kind of um, what kind of art does that person do? And how, do, how does it, can you give an example of how it is a counter narrative? If, if you can, I don't know. It's, if it's yeah, yes, he was, uh, he was a poet uh, uh, in addition to many other things. He was also a musician, uh, an actor and, uh, and so on. But uh, he was making his, uh, he was uh, this, uh, what is epos in, in English, uh, a large uh, poet, poetical narratives. Epic poem, poems, yes. And, uh, and uh, they were translated uh, in many languages and they brought up a new kind of uh, historical uh, interpretations about the Sami history, and uh, they were going inside to the to the Sami uh, Sami understanding of uh, environment uh, uh, relation to to the nature and relation to other people, and uh, that was something that was something that has been. Uh, called uh, counter narrative for for the majority uh, majority uh, understanding of Sami history, but uh, I I 
myself, I have been doing work uh, with uh, these Sami uh, photographs that I was mentioning here and uh, the change that ha has been happening there. So that is also kind of counter narrative uh, in the internet ethnic level. But uh, we have been doing it uh, uh, at the beginning. We were doing with the Sami uh, to, ha to have new kinds of history, historical document for ourselves that we were going to the majority uh, uh, photo archives, taking the, the, the photos about the Sami, and uh, they were usually that these are laps from Utsuki, these are laps from Enonteki and, and so on. That was the narrative there. And we, we brought them back to the Sami society, asked people who are these people, what, to, what happened to them, what, what kind of stories do they have. And then when publishing it uh, in the majority languages, it became also a counter narrative, but uh, it was uh, uh, at the beginning. It was uh, more like uh, more like uh, our no uh, to to uh, to have to have uh, more knowledge of our people and uh, what has happened here in in the in the local level. I don't know if it, Thank you. if I could explain it. Okay. Uh, anyone else has anything to say at this point? Maybe maybe I squeeze in a question myself. Um, I don't know how long you have been interested in Sami histories, histories of the Sami. Uh, I'm interested in what kind of historiographical changes, changes in the traditions of writing, history of the Sami people there has been in your career. You obviously talked a lot about colonialism, which I think um, I regard kind of a big story. And I don't, did it come in the 1990s? But are there any others? So how has the, the writing itself, how has it changed? Are there other big traditions? Um, the small histories. Um, I think somewhere you took up Jorma Kalela, Jorma Kalela's idea of small mm. histories. And uh, he was probably writing in the 1980s about it already and then later on. Mm. Um, but yes, if you have, I'd like to hear how has it changed in the time you've been active in uh, writing? Uh, yeah, history writing. Mm. Are there other significant traditions, changes in the traditions of how to uh, some history, some people have been ap approached from a historical point of view? Yes, well, well, uh, the Sami history has been studied quite a lot, I must say. That uh, already the so-called lapological there was so-called uh, tradition of uh, lapology, uh, which uh, meant that the outsiders were researching the Sami, and uh, it has a long tradition. And all, already they, they were studying also Sami history, but it was not the main focus on, on their work. Uh, and they had this, uh, this kind of presumptions that, uh, that make it uh, at least old-fashioned nowadays. Uh, but uh, in 1970s, uh, the Sami also started to ha make historical historical research, and, and it was due to, uh, to the rights of the Sami people that uh, uh, there was a, a Sami institute uh, was established in in uh, Norwegian side that was uh, having research, making research on the Sami issues. There was also, of course, there were linguistic issues and then with the livelihoods. But then one import, uh, important sect sector was uh, the Sami historical rights. 
and uh, they started to uh, uh, to do that uh, uh, research uh, from the Sami perspective that that time, and it was a a, a shift uh, that uh, that was uh, very important and uh, maybe. Uh, then in 1990s there was a, there was a, was a, a new change that uh, when when the Sami were uh, started to uh, study more more as uh, subjects uh, of their uh, their own histories and uh, for instance the the, uh, the political history came important for the Sami researchers or some institutions, and uh, and there were there was uh, this kind of new uh, new understanding what what Sami history could mean because the old old way was uh, was a little uh, this kind of arrayoitettu. Um, what is the word? Re, yeah, restricted idea of the Sami history that that uh, well there is still this kind of that uh, that the Sami history is only only this or, or only that. But when I came to 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 the university, uh, and, uh, I was uh, I was. Uh, uh, a little uh, my mind was a little blur blurred because in school they did not uh, teach anything about the Sami, Sami history as you know who have gone through Finnish schools they still don't have any any teaching in Sami history and uh, then we had this uh, these uh, stories, for instance, I'm telling in my in that book that uh, I wrote recently. I, I'm telling about my aunt, Maret, who was my history teacher, uh, who was telling these uh, sto our histories, these stories, what happened to in our family and in our kin and and in this this uh, close uh, environment that was another and then we have this already then they were talking about the, the colonial histories that was very in a very it was marxist time it was in a very this kind of the above everything and i was in that uh, what is this? And uh, so this is a long, long story, but uh, I don't know if it's going anywhere. Thank you. Still time, a chance if anyone has. Yes. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Elipeka, for this very wonderful and inspiring talk. It was wonderful to hear your talk and see the references for the various research publications that you have produced. I, was, um, uh, I thought that the um, lesson tonight for me was this uh, empowering resource. And I thought that that's so valuable that you... Uh, tuned the title of your talk and, and really brought this empowering resource. And maybe there are actually several empowering resources that you referred to, but uh, most um, like a, 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 a concrete example was that the National Museum of Finland repatriated the whole collection of Sami ethnographic artifacts to uh, Sida. And I think that that's a, such a powerful gesture from a uh, nation that they 
uh, they move all the collection to the Sami and 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 uh, you mentioned that uh, uh, it can be so important for for Sami people themselves to have those all those items and the history so close to them and so that they can they can go to go to see them and I think that of course this is how how it should be and and maybe I have uh, wondered myself when I've been visiting Helsinki or or some museums why these uh, artifacts are here far away from the people uh, who they belong to and that's uh, uh, that type of pondering that we have to do many times in many many places still but I'm thinking that how we could go forward from here how to how to nourish this type of how to how to care take care of this uh, uh, these empowering resources and how this how to cultivate this type of actions here locally in Oulu or or other locations and and what we could do in aim to um, uh, 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 like uh, function ourselves as em empowering resources when we are working uh, as educators and researchers and and um, uh, collaborators here. Can you uh, share some thoughts about uh, what are your visions uh, uh, on future? How how to go forward from here? Oulu University has the uh, uh, Institute, which is our national task here, but um, we know that the resource are, resources are not so so large but but the university is large and how what we could uh, uh, do in aim to serve this serve as empowering resource here yes thank you uh, first about that repatriation process that uh, it was a really interesting process that uh, when you say that uh, it was a great uh, gesture or from the National Museum. It, maybe it was more about uh, the result of the mutual mutual uh, communication and uh, and uh, and the uh, and the development of things because uh, it was uh, not uh, that the National Museum itself found it out that all right we will do that but uh, but it was uh, the Trondheim meeting that uh, the the leaders of the National Museum of Finland were also visiting the Trondheim meeting in 2017 and there was in Norway they had uh, doing this work because there there was already developing uh, development uh, in which uh, the two Norwegian museum museums had repatriated parts of their uh, Sami collections to to the Sami, and uh, there was this kind of uh, exhibition in Trondheim where also leaders of the National Museum went, and they found out that all right, this has been done in, in Norwegian side, why cannot we do it in the, in the Finnish side? And when they went back to, to Helsinki, they, they, they decided that uh, we will uh, give it back and we will not give back only a part of the collection, but, but compared to Norwegians, we will give the whole collection back. So a little competition there also. So so, and uh, and otherwise also this repatriation processes we have, we had this dissertation of Eva Kristina Nylander just a few months ago, where she has studied uh, this uh, this uh, every these attitudes and uh, processes that were going on and. Uh, she is saying that even 10 years ago in Finland, 
it seems uh, seemed quite impossible that they would be repatriated and uh, suddenly there there was a very very rapid uh, development and uh, it make, made it possible so so even these uh, ideas that can feel impossible now then it, it can be uh, done quite uh, in a, in a short period if uh, if the things are going that way but uh, yes about the future i'm a pensionist i don't think about the future anymore but do you have ideas talk about around those ideas uh, with class of wine or what do you think okay um, are there still any comments in your minds questions yes Perhaps a good way to end it. Uh, what do you think this whole conflict with the Sami, and when I say conflict, I mean like uh, what they've gone through, where it is now. You talked about transcultural connections, correct? How do you think that this conflict can teach us about other conflicts that are going around around the world right now? Like, What can we learn from these things? How do they connect? Um, how can we make the Sami struggle not just about Sami people or indigenous people, but it's a struggle that deals with other conflicts and cultures as well. I, I think you would agree with that, correct? It can, you can learn from these things. So, I think, I don't know. Yes. Uh, oh, well, the Sami have had a quite active role in, in the cooperation between uh, the indigenous indigenous peoples in, in the world. So, they have been sharing uh, sharing the experiences from the other indigenous peoples and uh, and the other pe indigenous peoples can also share these uh, sami experiences uh, but uh, this is a quite uh, quite interesting situation that uh, the sami have in their politics they have been seeking for for uh, support uh, when when they see that in in the national level. First, uh, they they have been seeking the the support when when they see that in the local level they cannot manage to 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 uh, to have their rights. They go to the national level that uh, there has been always the link between the Sami and the Finnish presidents, for instance, or, or the in, in Scandinavian uh, lands with, uh, between the Sami and the king. It has been quite famous even that, that uh, in Finnish they, they are speaking about kuninkaissa uh, käyminen, going to the king. It was a, a Quite, uh, quite known concept for the Sami that if if they don't make it like uh, like it should, we can go to the king or to the president or to the Tsar. And uh, one of the most remarkable uh, historical documents that uh, the Sami are having to show their rights is the Skold Sami uh, archive. Uh, which uh, which uh, includes the, the letters from Tsar when when the Sa Sami were were complaining about the local uh, officials, then they could uh, write to the Tsar and Tsar answered and said that this won't go. So you must these are these are our our citizens and and they they must be protected and uh, that is quite a large collection of, of those from 17th and uh, 18th century uh, 
so so this uh, I don't know I don't remember what I was telling about it was a very interesting idea what I was what was I talking about <laughs> what was your question uh, that's okay we <laughs> uh, well I had an idea well I think my question was uh, kind of like these trans, you know, these, these trans yes, cultural yes. connections. Like, how can we learn? What does the Sami experience teach us about other conflicts? I was thinking, like, you know, even if it's something as, as large as like the Ukrainian war or things that are going on in other parts of the world um, with uh, other indigenous groups. I mean, it's got to go beyond just indigenous, even though it's super important. I know that, but I mean, this idea that it should teach us about conflict in general. So, what do you think, in essence, this? What we've learned, what do you, you think it will teach us about conflict? How could it help us be better, I guess? Yeah. Okay, I will continue that uh, that earlier idea. It was that uh, they have been seeking the the support from national level. Then they went to the Nordic level to have support when they didn't manage to have the rights in, in the national level. And now... Also, the indigenous level has been very important uh, to have pressure to Finland, for instance. But uh, it has been surprising that uh, that uh, Finland, for instance, doesn't follow the the international uh, commitments in these indigenous uh, issues. That uh, that it it has it has been. Uh, surprise or, or something uh, what we are wondering that uh, that uh, why is it so that uh, the Sami are having a, a remarkable position in the indigenous cooperation and uh, they are bringing pressure for for Finnish Finnish uh, um, government uh, to to fill their their uh, responsibilities, but it it doesn't work anyway. So it it's quite interesting about that. Uh, that uh, what is the what is the use or or the what we can learn about the Sami experiences? Of course, it's always that. What can we learn? To, uh, about anything that uh, that uh, for instance uh, many times we are talking about uh, the uh, traditional knowledge of the sami and uh, many times outsiders are asking that uh, well yes you have this traditional knowledge and we have the climate crisis so so please give uh, give us uh, your wisdom but uh, that wisdom is not uh, not for the uh, it it is local wisdom that uh, the Sami reindeer herders know their own wh what is happening there and they know these kind of uh, structural things and uh, and uh, how things work but uh, but is it uh, but is it uh, possible to to use them in the in the uh, to help in the global crisis, I don't know, and uh, and so uh, how can we use the Sami uh, historical traditional knowledge? For instance, that uh, if I say that uh, the Sami are um, uh, the only nation in in the in Europe. That has never waged a war against other people. We have not. Uh, we have not uh, uh, been making a war against other people. So, what is the use in in this kind of situation where there is a war in Ukraine? I don't know. I don't know if it's for
an answer. Okay, it is on. Okay, um, we are soon approaching the end of this interesting session. If any quick comments or questions, we can still fit in one. And if not, then I think we end here and we thank Belibeka once more. Thank you. This is wonderful. Um, now uh, we end the formal session. Then we have here wine and food for you to enjoy, feel free. Even if you didn't register, there's enough of it, I think. And if you like to have some souvenirs, we have here posters and something to read. This kind of interesting report about eudaimonia. Feel free to take and one to your friend as well. Um, Okay, thank you. We'll see in the context of eudaimonia. We'll see next year again. Thank you so much. Oliko siellä Julis? Saa.